Boyd, every single fight, Spectre's gonna get huge, and she's gonna carry the entire game. All right, so if Nigma wins, it's gonna be very much like, uh, actually, you know what, I'm not gonna make the analogy. I was gonna make actually the worst anime analogy ever, and Please. thankfully the game's ready, so I don't have to do that right now. I'm gonna throw it over to the casters, and we're gonna get into this best of two. Second game right now. Right now. <laughs> Prepare for battle. Looking for Nigma to take and win as many team fights as they can, while Vici has that late game insurance and a Spectre. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that draft? Yeah, I gotta agree. They just, I don't think they have enough to close out the game in 30 minutes. Last game they had Lycan, uh, also didn't succeed to close it out uh, early enough. And this time around, I think it's gonna be even worse. Ori, at the start of the second season, he was a bit slow. You know, he was not Ori. He was 70% Ori, 30%, I don't know what it was, water. Uh, but at the that. end of the season, it's the good old Ori. You know, because you, you have high expectations of this player, what he can do. And we can see in the previous game, he ended up with, what, 21, 22, and one score in the end. And in this particular game, also, he is the king. Because you're playing in the Dark Willow, Puck, and Ancient Apparition. These heroes are just food for you. Like oh. one combo, you delete one of these heroes, keep repeating it, hashtag repeat, and keep going in and out. Also, it's a good matchup for Tiny on a mid lane with the addition of the water runes so he can be pushing out the wave use avalanche uh, three grab three toss three toss and then just out push the wave uh, enigma on the other side they have a good combo and they have um, great ways to deal with the centaur especially stampede with the coil with the arena yeah so they're not gonna get too much value out of it and they have a great combo like either it's um, terrorize into mars arena or terrorize into coil to break it uh, and get that long range so. done center is Strong hero, one of the strongest offlaners right now for sure, but it just doesn't feel as strong when you're playing into Ancient Apparition. Ooh. GH. Yeah, with DY already having a bit of a scrap in that jungle. And Dark Willow always going to come out the victor in that battle, especially with Mind Control's assistance. First Blood very early spillage there. As Vici Gaming lose out their support in the safe lane, it does give a little bit of freedom for Poyo, though, to secure the range creep, but of course important for that safe lane carry to do so. And just coming back to your, to your speech about combos and things like that, like, like you said, it's going to be difficult for the Centaur to use Stampede, but I think that's uh, something the panel brought up as well, was you know, the fact that we like to see Nigma when they are playing very, very speedily. And we'll see if R2W can pick up the pace with that Ursa build that you've been talking about. Currently facing off against the old 11 Centaur and PYW Shadow Shaman. This is the, this is the base damage lane. They've got like 155 base damage between the two of them. P pretty ridiculous yeah, stuff. Pretty balanced, so, exactly. Denying and last hitting, all that good stuff. PYW Shaman was a thing. Like, during the first season, the best Shadow Shaman player uh, without a doubt, he's done some amazing stuff. Um, you know, there's a couple of other really good players. Uh, Gene Q uh, also played it quite a lot, but okay. uh, PYW Shaman is something uh, to always be feared. Because he knows. The thing about this game is both supports on both sides are not going to have a good time. If, let's say, Puck gets a first jump, if you get inside the arena, you're straight up dead. Same goes for Tiny going in on one of the supports, blowing them up. Support. I feel in this game, we will need to see a lot of earlier buybacks yeah. from position fours and fives. This is how you win a team fight. I think Carl was mentioning the, the ability for Vici Gaming to send a strength core down the lane and have Shadow Shaman threatening with wards. They've got some great ways to bait out fights to start off, like Shadow Shaman or Centaur shows, then Tiny blinks in, Spectre haunts, they can turn things around. So I think Nigma have to be very much on their toes and maybe even see some of these you know, early maneuverability items, whether it's the, the Blink Daggers or even the Yule Scepters, to be able to catch, counteract Vici Gaming's game plan in that regard. In the mid lane, probably just going to be a, a farm trade for the most part, would you say? Tiny against the Puck. Puck doing uh, much better than I expected, but there's a full wave coming to Tiny. That's uh, why, because it's a pretty even matchup, I would say, where, you know, it can go both ways. If Tiny, if there's like a rotation, if Tiny uh, gets his rules uh, through and stolen, then he's going to struggle a bit. But uh, yeah, I he can also threaten a kill on Puck with his combo. Hmm. And so far down bottom, and DY's first death, definitely 
leaving a sour taste in his mouth, but so far hasn't hasn't really fed away too much more. You know, this threatening threatening lane from Nigma actually going to get onto the Spectre now with the Chainstones, but pops the wand and a little Fairy Fire to keep the Spectre alive. Interesting build from GH. I've seen different builds. I've seen him going for Max Shadow Realm. Oh, have... old 11. Cold Feet snaps on him. He turns. All oh, the double edge. Trades his life out, but killing that Ursa off. Beautifully done. This is a killer lane for VG Gaming. No points in a Retaliate. Uh, I think he needs to get it like right now, but uh, one... 2-0 build is kind of a thing when you are paired up with someone who can just disable them, like Shadow Shaman. Yeah. But to go back to the Shadow Realm talk, I've seen GH maxing the spell. This time around he went for one point in Bramble, one okay. point in Cursed Crown. I'm a big fan of Bramble Maze, where Bramble gets them maxed out. Uh, especially here, where I don't think you get uh, too much value from the Shadow Realm. We'll see mm -hmm. what he decides to go for, but just uh, more control and more damage, like laceration as well, is a great setup for Mars. Yeah, exactly, especially with that Mars, you know, spearing people through brambles, getting the Curse Crown stuns set up beautifully in that bot lane for themselves. As it looks like Ori, you know, like you were saying, pretty even matchup in the mid lane against the Puck. We'll wait for that kind of six, seven minute moment where they decide to rotate and come into the side lanes. That's still a good three minutes away. It does have to be the... Oh, Miracle dropping low. Pops the Water Rune on mid. He's turning back onto the Tiny. Oh, orbing forward. Ah, he's fine. Has a bottle. Magic Stick. Also fairy a Fairy fire. fire to work with, but needs to be careful now when Puck spells uh, come off cooldown. There are no Bounty Runes to be picked up. Yeah, so... You would wish someone dies in this situation. <laughs> like one of your side lane supports, they die. Go come damage. back to mid lane, refill the bottle. I'm not even kidding. Good no, you're reading my mind. That, that's, that's something I've been saying for ages. Yeah, just wait for DY to die. Come and refill the bottle. Back to position five. Spam out some sounds and bottle refills. Oh, they do get a catch on Tiny. There's the coil with a GH rotation. Picking off Ori. And that's Miracle hitting level six. As PYW thinking about the go on Kuro. Can't keep the chain stuns going. And of course, Old Eleven wanting to play the lane and not get dragged away by the pesky support. I gotta say, Old Eleven has been more stable. Uh, one of my favorite players in terms of like doing uh, fancy stuff, throwing the game, uh, overextending. Uh, I like these type of players, you know, but he's been more stable lately, just uh, doing the stuff, textbook examples. Yeah, for, for, for quite a while, in, in my mind anyway, he was somewhat of a, you know, a budget ice 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 where, like you say, he had these real crazy plays. He was able to get in the face of his opponents and cause havoc. And I always say about Eleven, either he is the best player in the team or like it looks like the worst one and no in between. So yeah, he's, he's become much more stable, you say, as of late. As we gather up in towards the rune spawn time, GH takes the haste and stunning DY caught up in the Bramble Maze with a combo. Tiny's in the toss. It does catch Miracle, but he jumped forward to his orb. Now caught out of the Eden DY. Shot, zaps him down, and DY taken out by the Shadow Realm, but they've got Tiny and Shadow Shaman both here on the GH Dark Willow, but Maraska got a haste and run away. I'll hold 11, very close to death. Oh, it doesn't catch. Oh, that was close. Shaman was teeping top to buy mana boots. Combo again. GH, has he got Shadow Realm? And he looks like he's safe and sound regardless with the wand and the raindrops. The rain the drop. shadow. Plus a fluffy hat is the thing to buy on support this game. The you counter. Do not exactly, the tiny counter. <laughs> Oh, mind control. He's been left alone for a decent amount of time, but he's, he's top of the net worth, given a good early lane stage by the Willow. 3,100 net worth for him, so... What, 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 what we're seeing, is it going to be the Blink? Is it going to be the Yules? Or does he go Hood first? What's the plan for MC? For MC, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, a Hood or Blink into Hood, because... Decides what the, the, we'll see what Puck decides to go for, because okay. right now he has a Witchblade, which I'm fine with that, nice. uh, just to be able to one-shot the supports. Oh, it's a smoke. Oh, he spots them. Avalanche to stop any attempt to jump up to his high ground. So he dodges the gank. And it looks like Nigma also wanted to try and scout out some stacks in that Radiant Triangle area too, and maybe get some vision down. Poyoyo is level 6, and Spectre does not have mana to work with. He's bringing uh, some region, has power treads. Let's see if DY has one mango to work with, so he could potentially use it on him and then make a play. Yeah. Global presence is very strong for Vici Gaming with the Spectre, Tiny blinking in, you follow up with the Stampede, possibly, so very maneuverable. Yeah, they're everywhere on the map and nowhere at once. Tiny finding the Dark Willow. 
Shadow Realm, not going to save her from the onslaught that is PYW. Shadow Shaman, oh, hang on a second. They slipped the Dark Willow away. The Stampede, but into the coil. Now PYW is the one stuck. Shackles up for the Miracle Puck. Nigma have back up with GH and Kuro both still lurking around. And PYW, the one I guess found and killed while GH survives. And GH is level six, eight minutes in. That raindrop already expended every single raindrop charge. I would not be surprised if he decides to buy another one. Dyer's Spam the raindrops, keep them going. Top. And he's pairing up with that Kuro Ancient Apparition. Looking up towards the top lane, Safeguard ILTW's farm. He's got phase boots and that ring of health heading into the hood. Plus a chipped west on top of it. Oh, a yeah. lot of uh, region sitting at the tower, 11 per second. And old 11, he's gonna slip away. Hides in the trees, went for Vanguard himself. Probably gonna go for that Vanguard hood into the Blink Dagger. Pretty standard stuff yeah. from the centaurs these days. Just want to be able to tank up, not necessarily get an early blink there, because you're a bit laner. Oh, there's the it's combo. The tiny. Combos Curry up the ancient apparition, kills killed. the courier with his nice little tree toss back towards it. Again, they have multiple heroes that benefit. From Inkswell, you have Tiny, one of the best ones. He goes in, especially with the Blink Dagger. And um, I'm a big fan of Tiny's not upgrading the boots instead of just rushing the Blink Dagger. Miracle. Hey, all the way. He saw that one coming. Ooh, that was not quick enough from PYW. And GH still going to get caught here, but he gets the Bedlam out and the Shadow Realm damage. PYW, he's going to get Miracle's caught by the Miracle up. backstab. The coil hits two mana. Double kill for Miracle while Ori gets away from the cold feet in the vortex. GH trades himself for this time. Two kills gathered up by Miracle and a stack being claimed thanks to that magic amp and the level four orb waning rift. Uh, they needed Shackles straight away, uh, PYW not executing perfectly, Hexing, but not using the Shackles straight away, which gives enough time for Dark Willow to use the Shadow Realm. Still, no Haunt, uh, not even a, a point in it, just maxing out the Dispersion, okay. going into Blade Mail, pretty standard stuff, Power Treads into Blade Mail, Manta style, uh, most likely Scotty, just the uh, tank up, maybe even like Manta Diffusal Blade, I'm a big fan of a Diffusal Blade in this patch particularly, because it just feels really good, Balfour got there, so you gotta get something other than that, getting closer to Blink Dagger, Hello. Tiny, can he blow him up? I tried. Arena available, <laughs> Terrorize with the Spear, oh, that Ink Swell's not gonna do very much, and GH, the slippery devil he is, yet again, out of the grasps of Vici Gaming. And what was that? Four heroes brought down to the Spectre lane as they stampede top. That's to get old 11 away from RLTW. Gary, it was to get faster from the bottom lane to the mid lane with that stampede. <laughs> Efficiency, he also runs away. The macro play. Yep, bottom lane. A ulti flying. Where's the follow up? Is that Smoke. looking for Looks it? Looks pretty dead. Poyo. Beautiful setup. Good call across. There it is. Slay the Spectre. Yeah, Unexpected. Yeah, as Vichy Gaming, like you said, had moved from bot back to mid and Nigma, they find their opening. There were no wards, they have one ward behind the tower. Shadow Shaman ulti dropped on a mid lane plus a catapult. Uh, no AA ulti, they know it for another 15 ish seconds. Radiance Making the tower tiny, 12 armor, and has a blink dagger now. Oh, he does. Ulti W and Miracle try and defend that mid lane against the serpent wards. Killed off the catapult, the wards are all gone. Mid tier one looking a little worse for wear though, around 300 HP. Let's see Ori if he decides to use Shovel once. Like near the shop, you can swap it, but he is bringing it to Old Eleven, it seems. Or gonna give it to DY. DY, you're a Kobold right now. Start digging. <laughs> is it gonna be a Kobold? No, it's a Salve. Give that to Old Eleven straight away so they can stay around. Uh, so shows on that top lane. Vici. Interesting build from Centaur. He built a Vanguard, then disassembled it, used mm. that ring to get a Hood of Defiance, and now gets a Vanguard once again. Mm. Cool. What if you di keep disassembling it? Disassembling the Vanguard and over and over again. Then you disassemble again. Vanguard, you get a Lotus Orb. <laughs> or an Aeon Disc. Yeah, there's a few things you could do with that. I think it's a bit of an underused mechanic, being able to dis disassemble certain items, especially yeah. for Bristleback, where you can, like, he builds into many items, but the Hood Vanguard, Disassemble Vanguard later on, uh, get a Bloodstone possibly. There's just there's so many things you can do with it. Yeah, limitless options top almost top there. That's, that's a good point. Well, Miracle has his Witchblade. GH, Kuroki, both level seven. 
And they would love to get some action around this Dream Coil. Yet again, going back to what the panel was saying about needing to win team fights. They'll have to defend up. He w doesn't die. He's too fine. tanky. That Hood of Defiance, maybe they get surprised. You know, didn't click on a hero. I see Radiant certain players doing it. But yeah. This very shrinker, though. They're going to have another Tombow pretty soon. Yeah, that's the big item you get on Tiny. That extra bit of a burst sometimes that you need. The they GH. Thanks, well. Here comes the combo. Blows up the Dark Willow. And another objective Dying secured by Vici top. Gaming. That's the systematic maneuver that we've been expecting from them. Radiant tower to tower. Every single attack. time there's Shadow Shaman wards up, they rotate to one of the lanes. And they stampede forward. They know RTW is nearby. They're going to catch him without his enrage. He's tossed back in. To DY. DY. Oh, you're gonna turn and try and fight in the arena with a spear and the ice blast coming in. They're gonna take down Ori here with an ice blast and slay it. Miracle with a coil catching the centaur too. The hex though, PYW and Poyo get into the back lines for the ancient apparition. The soul is also gonna connect onto the puck in the Mars. But PYW's down and Poyo left here without any backup. Nigma surround the Spectre. Now there's no retreat. RTW, he was the one that was initiated on, gets a double kill. Or D Y, he's fine. TP's home successfully. This build on Ursa allows them to take these earlier fights because without the hood, he wouldn't be tanky enough. And Miracle, he is once again having a blast. Both of the mid laners pretty much, uh, but this time around, Miracle having a better time. I don't think you get this kill. The Dark Willow, does she have ulti? She does, but still respecting the damage that he can tank, plus also the TP rotation. Yeah. Tiny's Oh, in. look at that. Straight on to Kuro, but you said it, the counter's there. He's got the fluffy hat. hats, the fluffy hat for AA. And PYW down in the river, isolated, taken out quickly by Nigma, who moved forward aggressively. Great spear back, mind control, finds the pick, and allies blast him into oblivion. A double for Miracle, and they want all the level now as well, apparently. Tanky sent will be down, I mean, DY is being dived by the puck. All the level in the cold, feet snap, and DY down, a triple for Miracle, and GH picks up the fourth. Yeah, they're like the something that I mentioned, you know, but fluffy I've seen mind control getting multiple fluffy hats. I didn't mean that for this particular game. If you get more than two, that's actually griefing. But uh, two is fine. Ancient apparition, we see him sitting at 1300 HP. We have a uh, Dark Willow also having just one casual fluffy hat, which allows you to not die after Tiny using a comp on you and very quick rotation from Nigma. They understand like there are no Spectre Haunt, there's no Stampede. Let's try to make stuff happen. They kill the tower with the catapult wave on top of it pretty much uh, the stars aligning for them oh absolutely and now they've got this miracle puck with blink dagger it's big like it's puck with a blink dagger it's ursa with a hood and a diffuser blade in a go gold it's time to keep Just trying keep on running at them pyw out on his lonesome in the middle of the trees there and a good spear off the tiny the combo just keep flowing for nigma one after the other they get pick off after pick off amici gaming starting to crumble dy in the ice vault deck slow down miracle gets the coil solo off the grim take him out a lot of drawing on a minimap, like they are here. We know, we can see it. Uh, apparently, Vici Gaming, they don't have any vision. Um, Nigma, they set oh, up a high ground ward. Like this ward will most likely get devoted, but they got the most out of it. Even if it's placed like straight away, you get a kill or two. They can also protect that ward easily. And Centaur getting closer to the Blink Dagger, so he could potentially be the one initiating on top of the Tiny. Tiny now upgrading the boots, the power treads going into Echo Saber. They need that a little bit of extra burst. Like that second hit is sometimes oh, yeah. all, all you need to finish off a certain hero. Absolutely do. Absolutely do. And he's going to try and farm that up at the top. Taking out some neutral creeps. Well, I mean, PYW, he just can't really show on the map. We were talking about the threat Oh no! Of Mind what? control suggesting another Fluffy hat for Kuro. He's How holding on to got? three right now. He's got three fluffy hats. Oh, he's the Ushanka King right there as they get the catch on to Centaur. He's popped his hood. Vanguard up. Oh, he's just destroyed by all the magic damage. You're not tanky. Like, they have probably the best setups in the game for AA to hit the blast. Yeah. You have Mars, you have, a, like, even Dark Willow stun. And they're not really long yeah, cooldowns, are they? Yeah, they don't really rely on any of the cooldowns, so they can keep fighting all the time, and that's exactly what they're doing. And soon you're going to have this BKB on MC. He's got Blink Dagger already, so whenever he sees a target, he can jump an arena. While Ori, man, a mana gone. burn. Yeah, this Ursa is going wild on him. A tiny's not going to last long. He's going to try and blink away. He's pretty speedy. Pops his one, but in comes that Blink Arena, we were just mentioning, Mind Control closes the door on the Tiny. Very clean game from Nigma. Just going in, keep fighting, not losing any of the heroes. 
And that also allows them to take Roshan whenever they want to, doesn't it? So if they win a big team fight, it's just straight into Roshan no matter what. Right now, Nigma is just controlling the big portion of the map, uh, not allowing Vichy Gaming. Like, Vichy Gaming has vision inside the enemy jungle, which they don't benefit from at the moment. There's the spear. Snap the coil. Snaps it up. And, oh, put up. Oh, Blade Metal causing a few issues as Poyo turns the damage back onto them. Haunts around, tries to run. Gets himself a little bit of distance as Nigma. They do disengage. Scatter back to a bit of safety, but that's that's Haunt expended defensively. Something Vici Gaming would have been relying on to win a team fight in the next couple of minutes. Vici Gaming needs to tone it down a bit to try not to take these fights, uh, get some vision up in their own jungle, devoured, and play for a bit uh, later stages of the game. Nigma knows that because, like, they know that they can fight inside the Roach Pit, as you mentioned, and I don't think there's going to be any response. Doesn't look like it. But I think you're right, VG Gaming. Name of the game right now is delay, delay, delay. Five time. Go to Shopkeeper. I know you have all these shiny items. Bro, do you have time? We need to buy some time. Do, do, do you have a loan, you know, any kind of credit system? Can I borrow a rapier? No, no, no. I'm going to save up for it little by little. And that's now Aegis in the hands of RTW. And they've got some... Towers up top that should be pretty easy to claim for Nigma, and they are, yeah, pinging out to cut the wave in between Tier 1 and Tier 2 there, while also holding on to mid lane, so spreading out across that top third of the map and forcing Vici Gaming to be farming a little less efficiently elsewhere down towards bottom altogether. My gratitude. Interesting positioning from Tiny right now, though. It looks like he's scouting out... Creep skipping. Oh, is it that, just creep skipping? That's it. Blast it and uh, get the hell out of there. Yeah, cut that wave. TP's coming back from Miracle, though. Oh, he's hungry for this. Mind Control's also arriving. There's the Arena Coil. Catches the Tiny out. And DY, he can't TP out. The Soulbind's there, but what, what are you going to do? It's a Grim Stroke. You're just dead to raise. MC comes out with a double. Beautiful setup. Nick again. They were so ready for it. Like, exact Radiant's moment when he shows up, and you can see that they know. Radiant's like, the decision making who's going to TP to Tier 2 Tower, who's going to keep it to tier 3 tower they like it's just really on point nigma this game 7k gold lead 22 Dyer's kills to the six of each gaming oh yeah that's the that's the lead it's starting to spiral out of control much more of a solid position than they had in game one where of course they were leading in game one around this time as well but it feels like if they continue fighting battling and reacting as quickly as they have been Michi gaming gonna have some serious, serious problems. And I like this. I like what Miracle is doing after finishing off the Witchblade. Has Desso, so he wants to be able to scale. And uh, also going into BKB. He understands they got nothing. There's literally yeah. not a single spell that goes through magic immunity, so they're good to go. One of the reasons why Mars is also going for it. Uh, Ursa, after finishing the Hood, has Shard queued Radiant up, which is... Uh, yeah, it goes Basher as well. Yeah, Basher on top of it. Uh, just a casual one, because he's uh, super farmed at the moment. Oh, I'm oh, just smoke. piling up. A smoke's broken by Miracle Mid. And Mind Control is going to be lurking around near the Roche Pit too. I was going to say, if there's one thing Vici have shown they're very good at, it's choosing the right moments to strike around the Haunt with a smoke that was a four-man move. But Nigma just a step ahead in that situation until they lose the career there. Vitality booster of Kuroki drops. Tower is under attack. And an immediate response. Ice Blast chucked down to that bottom corner. Right hand side of the map. Everyone from Nigma smoking down here. And I think they might have spotted PYW. They're going to TP out though, is Vici Gaming. Better TP out. And also, he found the perfect item. Oh, for all the 11. All good, reliable fillet stone. 11 seems uh, pretty dead. No one to help him around. Yeah. Left down there all alone. And RTW continues his streak. And this map just... Uh, the, the fact that Nigma come bottom, they get a kill, they push one wave, and look at how quickly they move, TPing to top outpost, getting into the Radiant Triangle, because that's where they know Vici Gaming has to be. There's nowhere else they can farm. So they're keeping the pressure laid on very thick. Behold. Kuro, his item build. Like, if <laughs> if you've seen this in pubs, you'll probably think that I'm, I'm reporting this That's Overwatch a, case. And screw it, you, tiny build. <laughs> but this is exactly what it is, you know, just does not want to die to tiny. And I believe he's then, also going for Eon Disc, yeah, which I really like. It. So he's going to be able to get his spells off. 
most likely gonna get uh, procced by Spectre in a team fight. Maybe maybe Spectre doesn't have enough damage to actually go. Oh, they just find mind control. They toss the horn illusion. Great terrorize. Shackles got cancelled out though. The soul bite comes in with a big blink stop. Mind control's taken down, and it looks like Nick might still wanted to turn a fight around Poyo. So no man, there, but he just walks straight through them. No life. Miracle beyond godlike, and they want PYW as a cherry on top of this team fight. Yeah, kill the mods, we'll kill the rest of you. Who's the third one? Ah, he's out there. Grimstroke barely TPing home, but Tiny might not have the same luxury. He's been caught, snapped, and frozen in the cold feet. Down you go, a triple for Miracle. Miracle is just completely popping off in this game, as he was in the previous series. Now, like that was a fight with Buck Arcane Rune, has face shift attack, has the damage thousand on top of this, so uh, just not enough. Like they need to execute the combo, they need multiple. Oh. Multiple spells, multiple shackles in a team fight, but it's hard. As we said at the start of the game, supports are gonna struggle. Because Puck, he gets the first jump, you can't fight. Like, you get silenced, pretty much you're dead. Delay, draw for Nigma as well. Yeah, give that to Kuro, shall we? He buys himself a smoke as well. Definitely a, a sign of life, though, from VG Gaming. Even though it, it wasn't a great team fight, they lost out a lot. Still the ability to make moves on their terms, which is something that some teams can struggle with when they are so far behind. I mean, a 10k lead now for Nigma with all those items you mentioned coming into them. And that next Roshan, just under three minutes away from fast spawn. What have we here? But a BKB from the Mars, and RTW's aggressive jump to high ground. Head shard. DY nearly just dies in a terrorize on the two of them. GH is going to come in with the help of the coil, the fear of the mother, tiny dead, and the Centaur looking pretty screwed as well. Unstoppable Ursa back onto the Spectre with a bedlam. Once the control looking like though from Nigma is a spear, and the clear up from GH. Four heroes obliterated. <laughs> If Urza gets any other item than what he's got, if he doesn't have Hood of Defiance, he straight up dies there. Potentially different fight, but very nice itemization from YLTW. I, I don't think I've been pleasantly surprised by someone just knowing how like good itemization can win you the game, as in this one. Surprised by someone buying a Hood? <laughs> No, as a carry, like this is, I don't think, uh, like if you scroll through data, I don't think you would be able to see Hood Ursa as the first item yeah. pretty much ever. I think you're right. So we used to see it a little bit on like Phantom Lancer, right? You know, PL, sure, PL. PL Hood makes sense, but Ursa, yeah, not really something that we really come across too often. Well, hello, two max stop, and then the Stampede to run away because they got the arena down. Or he's blinked in aggressively looking for Miracle. The point's gonna manage to win, ripped off the side, but not far enough. They got him. GH comes in with a bedlam though, needs to turn it back on the Tiny, finish him off with mind control. PYW on RTW and VG Gaming hold their high ground to get two massive core kills. Mind control might even be the third one they grab. He's stuck down here in old 11, tracking back on the Mars. It's a good ice blast coming in, but I think MC is not going to manage to get up the staircase. Turned on and zapped by PYW while well, Kuro can't hide. No. Stop cancels it. Ancient apparition done for. Enigma, they got what they came for. They killed the melee barracks, the range barracks at 20 HP, so they can be taken down easily still. You know, they have a better late game. If this goes post the 35, 40 minute mark, uh, you know, considering the amount of the farm and the advantage that they got, uh, might not be too good for Vichy Gaming, but Spectre's getting farm. Like, Spectre got that Manta style, so potentially next Roche, which could spawn in 35 seconds Ooh. and be taken. Spectre deals ton of damage. With Manta style, Shadow Shaman Wards, maybe that's the sneaky play that they need. I was talking about the itemization, he wanted to get like Bash or Butterfly. I'm more of a Diffuse Blade fan, as already stated, where mana burn on... Um, not, like, not just the support, it also gives you that extra slow potential. The damage output that you get from it is insanely high. So I, I like the Diffusal Hero quite a lot. Yeah, against melee heroes, you know, Mars and Ursa, something that mana burn can really stack up and work against them quite quickly. It looks like we do have the big circle drawn around the Roshan, which is just under a minute from spawning. Everybody going to start vying for that positioning around the Radiant Triangle, around that top rune spot. GH walking in, wanted to try and grab the bounty rune. Is he going to terrorize back onto all the Leaven? Curse Crown already used dump self yules to try and save himself and buy a bit of time as mind control. He arrives. Arena in, catching the fire. They've got a cape there and a buyback from Willow. Ice Blast lands on the wall. And Poyo got a stuck in the arena too, but they've got a Stampede Coil catches the Spectre. They want to focus down Poyo real bad. Spectre's gone. No buyback on her either. 
Nice spell casting there from Nygma. They not overlapping catch? spells. They found PYW. He's the king. Oh, that's all the he's, uh, is he the king? I don't know. Looks like the Joker to me. He's a jester stuck up there. Yeah, great spell casting. Uh, using Arena, not overlapping the coil, so Spectre can't move. And AA blasts were on point once again, hitting on the multiple heroes. Can't region like. And no buybacks. Top tower has fallen. And you've got Miracle BKB at this point. Coming up to high ground. Oh, that blink. Tiny slips away with you on a DY. Unfortunately, doesn't have that ability. Tiny gonna get yours done. A server order thrown in onto them, but that tiny demolished by them. And again, no buybacks of Ichi Gaming. So their entire base is open season for Nigma to pick off these buildings. Radiance top tower is under attack. Panel talked about how they don't have enough damage. This is why Miracle says, you know, I've gotta get the damage. I'm gonna be the tower damage. 25 damage. Talent plus the death, so yeah. phase shift attack on top of it now has a full BKB. Just some good stuff. He's been involved in 29 out of 35 kills. I think everyone is pretty happy seeing Miracle back on the mid lane. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's just absolutely glorious to watch. And Vici now, what, two lanes of racks down. Try and reclaim any semblance of map control. D ward out their base. Maybe move towards the Roche pit. They've got Haunt, and they should have the majority of their arsenal ready at their disposal to try and contest this. BG take this fight. They smoke. They have, they have a big item, Gary. Shadow like... Shaman with a BKB plus Lens. He can go in, and if he does not get bashed by Ursa, it's not going to stop. So they need to execute. Like, this could potentially be a big turnaround for BG Gaming if they get there on time, which they won't. It's too slow. They can't get there, and they're scouted out by the wards. Attempt to terrorize, and look at that. The BKB is popped out by PYW, only to die to the right clicks of the puck. Miracle has the reveal to take down DUI2. Both supports gone for around a minute, and a five versus three that Vici have to deal with. They also have a shard, they gave it to Puck. So you can knock them back, snap the coil, Look potentially. At well, I thought Ursa was going to hunt the tiny. I mean, Ori is farming quite dangerously down there. RTW, I think, was considering moving into Triangle to, find, to try and find him. Oh, Only well, one lane remains, though, now, Lacoste. Down bottom, Vici have one lane to defend, but Nigma only have one lane to attack into with the entire what the set of ultis and abilities that we've seen them utilize so very well. I just need a bit of vision. Just need to catch a glimpse of someone here. And both Ancient Apparition and Mars are ready to make that jump. Ancient Apparition can die. Two floppy hats, Radiant's one in the backpack. Eon disc as well, sitting at 1800 HP at the moment. They're ready to go, they're ready to go. On the high ground, Miracle just gets straight up damage. Right now, has a Crystallis oh, in the yeah. backpack. We'll swap that in once he uses the haste. Yeah, get himself a bit speedy and then get the damage going. Not going to bother defending bottom tier too far too difficult in that real hilly terrain for Vici Gaming. So instead opting to push out top, hold mid and defend with everything they've got down bottom. They start with the well stop. Old 11 just trying to chip away at RTW, put the fear into Nigma so they don't straight push high ground. But look at MC, he jumps up there. He whacks back the tiny, and now RTW is in onto DY. Toss back the Ursa, but this it's Teddy Bear, he's not messing around now. They expect the horn, but they lost the PYW shadow. No Third supports are gone. Terrorize coming into the Spectre Illusions. I don't think they call the real one. Miracle's gonna have to join away to the old tiny wants it with a central blink, but he gets the cheese off. Survives the onslaught, and now the arena. Bashing up onto that tiny. RTW clears them up. This might be it, and they call it. They actually call it. Uh, one thing that I noticed, especially for IG in the Chinese scene, they call GG. They understand, like, we can't win this game. Well, a complete dominance.